All right, guys, I just wanted to show you something really insane. Uh, look at this. I just imported my 4x4 kilometer um, landscape, applied Namavi, the MW landscape material, which is free on Fab, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm using World Partition, but as you can see, I'm loading all of this stuff. So the whole landscape. So this is 4x4 kilometers. If you don't believe me, let me just go to the uh, top view here. And you can see this is my HDRI cube map. But if I just measure this here, this is 4x4 kilometers. And what I'm using, one tree you can see here in the far distance, it's just one single tree. You won't believe me, the, those are my own spruce trees. So I created dead spruce trees. Um, so my favorite stuff regarding trees. And one tree is between, so that three different types. One tree is, is between 600 to 900,000. So 600 to 900,000 faces or polygons. So it's, it's almost about like 1 million tries. Okay, so one tree and I'm scattering, I don't know, 50,000 trees or something. I, I'm not sure even more. If I just go top view, you can you can see how many trees those uh, like the PCG I'm using here. So if you just probably this is already like 300, 500. Look at this, how huge that is. And um, this is all because I implemented my own trees and I changed this to voxelize. So just for you to understand with the Unreal Engine 5.7, if you just go, let me open up this tree here. So this is just the, the dead tree. So it has less needles. Okay. But when you go down here to shape preservation, you can change this to voxelize, but you need to enable the nanite foliage in your project settings. Just go to project settings and enable the nanite foliage. So I'm not using the procedural vegetation editor. I'm using my own trees. And the good stuff is my own trees in Speed Tree 10, they are all completely vertex. They have all vertex paint. So this means my they have a nice gradient on the trunk and each branch also has a nice gradient uh, regarding the vertex. So even the small twigs they have, its root is colored with a red color and everything else has a gradient uh, turning into white. So I can mask out the red channel regarding word position offset. So later I can just, I can apply even wind. So what you see also here regarding the vertex color, I can, I animate the trunk. So the trunk has a nice gradient. So I can swing the tree trunk. I can have separate animation for my main branches, for the small branches even for the dead branches if I want to and for the knots and for the needles. I just need to check really quick why um, the branch here, let me see the dead branch, why there's no material here. Oh, let me just delete the AO. Don't need that for the dead branches to be honest. But yeah, now the dead branch is also loaded. Um, separate for knots, of course knots doesn't, doesn't need to be animated as you can see. But this is one tree and you can see it's even displaced. It has displaced bark material on that. It has a lot of like nice dead trees. It has, and this is all nanite. This is all nanite. Every single needle is nanite. And um, this is just a small version of a tree. If I just show you the other tree um, I just created inside Speed Tree. This is the main one. Okay, so they look quite unsettling, really cold, depressed. This is what I'm going for. What I did, just for you to understand, um, I modeled the trunk and displaced the trunk with dead branches inside Speed Tree 10. But separately, I created just five, six different um, clusters of one branch. So that one would be, if you see here, um, that one would be one branch, one main branch. I did this in Speed Tree. So, so this was just a trunk in Speed Tree. But then those are like branches and then I was just using twigs um, and populated them just to uh, create um, one big chunk of a branch uh, for this spruce tree. And I have like five or six different and then I was putting them manually. I was placing them manually on the tree. I think you can also use Speed Tree 10 and you can also uh, import this as a so-called detailed mesh. 
And then you can also populate those things procedurally, which is faster. But I was like, no, I will just go into Blender, import all those chunks. And then I was just placing them, copy, paste, copy, paste, placing, rotate, rotate, copy, paste, copy, paste, rotate. And it, it just takes me 30 minutes for one tree, to be honest. And um, so it's fine. So yeah, this is full nanite. You can see this tree has 1,759,700 nanite vertices. Nanite triangles 1.5, over 1.5 million, one tree, okay? And like I said, I can do all the event animation for trunk, separately for branch, small branch, dead branch, and I could even animate needles, but of course I will not do that. Um, so yeah, those are like many thousand trees, probably 30, 40,000, it's a lot. So, and you can see, I'm not even getting any graphic, um, like any problems at all for this. So, this is just insane. Um, let me get the PCG. Let me put this one down a little bit. Let me just crank this one up a little more. So, uh, let me get the Z axis to 50, so we populate even more. Look at this, now we have even more trees. And some Expo height fork, volumetric fork. It's all nanite, it's, it's just insane. I even have procedural foliage, thanks to the Mawi uh, master material. Just applied that, played with the snow slope, did the map in Gaia, the height map. It's just a simple Gaia height map with the mountain I just transformed in the center and a little bit of like some erosion around that. But this is just, I mean, this is just insane. Yeah, this is the voxelization. So if just in case, if you're wondering, if I type in nanite, um, for, is it fall off? I, no, offset, I always get those mixed up, offset. And I put this to, let me say, let me put this to two. And then you can see even the voxelization. All those, those voxels. Um, let me make this a little more obvious for you. Maybe on YouTube is a little too hard to see. So let me put this to four. Here you can see it's all voxel, the far distance. This is just sick. And as I told you, it's a four by four kilometer landscape. So you can't, you can even do it with the five by five. And I can even just hit play, see how huge that is when I press play. Look at this, like how big that is, this landscape here. Boom. Of course, I need to reset the um, offset for the voxelization. And I, of course, the reason why I'm sliding is because I increased the speed tremendously. Yeah, but I'm just falling off here. Yeah, but this is just sick. So let me just put this back to default. So nanite offset and then spacebar zero, enter, boom. So everything is now perfect. And then let me just press play again. So according to the Witcher 4 demo, this is just huge. So I basically, I'm basically recreating um, just the vibe of Witcher 4. Of course, what I want to do is I want to scatter um, the foliage and stones and all those stuff, all that stuff. So the only thing I scattered uh, with the PCG, just the trees. But I mean, look at this. Four by four kilometers and everything is complete nanite. Each tree is complete. You can see it's completely displaced. And I'm not even breaking a sweat here. And my computer is not the strongest one. It's fairly strong, but it's not. It's definitely not the strongest one. So most gamers, they even have a, be a much better computer than I have. And this is just insane. You can see here, yes, I'm using the world partition. So this is the reason why I have things not loaded here. World partition is definitely enabled um, in a runtime. So yeah, just wanted to quickly make this demonstration here, this demo uh, regarding the voxelization and the performance. And yeah, I was waiting for something like this for a long time, uh, to be honest. So it's just insane. So previously people were just faking maybe m most of the trees with like just simple planes in the far distance, especially when you do renders in Blender. But this is all co complete geometry, all real time. So yeah, perfect.